喵喵喵喵 ，Everybody， 我系广东小猫咪。大家好，我系广东小猫咪啊，想同你讲下今日 Mara 究竟系升定系跌，佢究竟系会一直升上去定系一直跌落去啊？好担心，好紧张，系咪啫？嗯 ，OK， I'm going to switch back to English、uh, before everybody freaks out. For those people who didn't know what language that was, that was German. That's OK. Don't worry about it. OK. I'm gonna go through some of the things here.、Um, one thing that's very interesting to to everybody is it's been going sideways. These are monthly chart over here on the left. It's been going sideways for quite some time. Is it losing its trend? Is it losing its momentum? How are you gonna be able to tell that? I'm gonna go through、um, some of the indicators that I have available. But first thing first, there's a website called fintel.io that actually tells you whether or not institutions are increasing their holding. Or if they're decreasing their holding, if you look at Mara under Fintel.io, you can tell over the last year or so, the institutional ownership has really been exponentially increased. Especially for months of March 2024 and April 2024 so far, there's been nothing but just increase for the institutional ownership. So far, the institutional ownership is up to around 30 percent. I still think there's a significant amount of you know, insider ownership. Um, but you have the likes of BlackRock and Vanguard who have already been in, and they've basically been increasing their institutional ownership over time,、um, especially over the last year or so. So, so far, look, looks like there is a pretty favorable picture where whales are coming in. And if you want to look for confirmation whether or not that really is the case, there is an indicator that's available on TradingView for free. If you just search for Black Cat L3 Banker Fund Flow. Trend oscillator. This doesn't tell you the exact、um, inflow or outflow. This tells you more of a trend. It's an oscillator. It's a trend indicator. So you're going to end up having you know detection of a trend rather than telling you exactly what happened that month. But so far the trend is still pretty bullish in terms of whales buying in. I think right now we're at a stage that looks very very similar to where we were over here when price just kind of went sideways over here. If anything, went a little bit down. But the well info continue to go up. You know, over here, I think we're seeing very, very similar things that we're seeing from the Fintel .io data, where wells are just continue to come in when price just kind of gone sideways. If anything, it's just kind of gone, gone down a little bit here. So, so so far we have the tailwind of wells coming in, having increased institutional ownership. And if you also just look at the volume too, that also tells you a very, very good story here, because over the last year or so, the buying volume has just been up, and the selling volume has just been down. You know that's one example. And so far, you can also argue that so far the selling volume over here has also been, you know, kind of decreasing. I mean, the month for April still hasn't closed yet. Still have another thirteen days of trading, so can't really make a judgment based on this volume candle. But so far, this looks like. Selling volume just kind of going down. Basically, you're just kind of consolidating sideways over here. Kind of like what happened over here, doesn't it? You know, buying volume just keeps on going up, right? And the selling volume just kind of, kind of went down, right? So all of those are basically telling you that big money institutions are more likely they're buying rather than selling. The usually these big volumes are dictated by big money. Rather than retail, so generally you, the the thought traditional thought for technical analysis is if you're looking at these volume bars, you really try to figure out what the wells and what the institutions and what the big money smart money are doing. And right now it looks like the big money buy, and they don't really sell too much because there's a little bit of exhaustion over here. A couple other things to look at too. You know what exactly is the formation? Is it doing anything that we need to pay attention to in terms of its formation right now? The formation right now does look like we have a little bit of a breakout over here of this very very long-standing range right here. We had a breakout, and right now simply we're having a back test right here. We had a big, huge volume breakout, and we have a back test here for about you know a couple months or so over here, and then we also again having a little bit of a back test over here on this monthly chart of Mara. So so far, it does look more of just like a breakout and a back test, which is something that is expected in a bull market. Because basically, what you're looking for, what you're really hoping for, is that previous resistance gets flipped into support, and that's exactly what it did. High volume breakout of the resistance now is 
back testing it right here as support. Looks like it could be holding. Looks like there's not really any particular reason to think it's not going to hold because that's the pattern right now. And if you also look at the monthly trend here, it's been making you know higher high, higher low, higher high, and it's trying to put in a little bit of a higher low right here. Depends how low it would go. Does it always have to find support here and bounce up? Could it break down here a little bit before it go up? Sure it can. Over here it did, right? Had a little bit of a wake underneath below that. These things are not absolute. They, there's always a little bit of wiggle room here and there, but the general idea is that this uh, breakout of this horizontal zone that has really been very important really since 2021. And now you're having a very important back test to make sure that this is great foundation before you're able to move up further. Now, some of the other things to look at too is if you look at the momentum, uh, momentum indicators such as the RSI, um, you can see that RSI actually there's not really, on the monthly, there's not really any like bearish divergence or anything that I can find. When price go up, RSI goes up, you know, it's, it's looking pretty boring, pretty standard thing here. Um, there's not really any, you know, bearish divergence to be concerned about here. And if you look at the unbalanced volume, if anything, we did have a little bit of a bearish divergence over here where, you know, price may have kind of gone sideways here a little bit, but the volume kind of went down a little bit. But I think that bearish divergence here has already been worked out. Even if that was really a true bearish divergence, I think that's already been you know, pretty much completely worked out and it's no longer active anymore. Right now, things, you know, all these indicators are kind of resetting. They're kind of resetting to a level to potentially allow it to go up even further. But I'm not seeing any um, exhaustion here for the primary bull trend, if you will. Another indicator to see whether or not we're in the bull trend versus bear trends, look at the Ishimoku cloud. You have a Tenkan line over here, which generally serves as support during a bull market to help push price up. You know, during the last bull market, it really had to kind of, you know, serve as resistance. But as soon as the tank and the red line over here flips from resistance over here to support, price just kind of went parabolic. Right now, we're still trying to, you know, we're still going through a process trying to flip the tank in from resistance to support. Right now, it's um, the, the red line is still kind of above where price is right now. But overall, the most important thing is that the Tenkan is changing its direction. It was downward sloping, and now the Tenkan is now upward sloping. That tells me that the Tenkan most likely is going to continue to go up because that is the trend right now. That's the primary trend. Another thing that has also happened is that Tenkan, the red line over here, has crossed over a, a lagging line over here, which is the Kijin. When the lagging crosses over the um, when the leading crosses over the lagging, you end up having a bullish cross, and that generally is something that is very 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 bullish. Last time we had a bullish crosses over here, and a couple months later, it went parabolic. Again, I'm not saying the same thing is going to happen this time, but the primary trend is being confirmed right now as being a bull trend. This is a bull trend, and that bullish cross right there confirms it. Now, another thing to give you a better idea in terms of what the primary trend is, is to look at the Bollinger Bands. Bollinger Band comes at a 20 month moving average, 20 month moving average is pointing up. Price has spent the majority of time on the upper part of the Bollinger Band, so this is a bull trend, and it's going to develop into a continuous bull trend moving forward. That's going to be the most likely high probability, which is also what happened last time. Price consolidates right now, so Bollinger expansion is kind of you know halting a little bit. But my expectation is that because the trend is bullish, because it's consolidating, most likely it's going to break out or break down. And because the price has been spending majority of time on the upper part of the Bollinger Band, most likely it's going to end up causing bullish continuation moving forward after the consolidation is done. But right now it's trying to eat a lot of supply over here up above that has a lot of price history over here too. And I do believe that right now it's trying to find a higher low before price gets pushed up further. And when that happens, Bollinger Band is going to continue to expand, allowing price to go up higher. That generally is what happened, and it happened over the last cycle over here as well. Again, I cannot say that oh, how it over, happened over the last cycle is going to happen during this cycle. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is that the trend is bullish and it's developing a bull trend over here, just like it did over here. That's all I'm saying. Right? Now, the other thing I want to um, talk about 
is instead of using all these indicators, why don't we just go ahead and zoom in the weekly here. In a very, very clear picture here, if you look at the weekly, it's been forming higher high, higher low, higher high, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, and right now it's trying to form a higher low right there. And this formation right here, whenever price is going up, there's increase in buying volume. Whenever price is going down, there's decrease in selling volume. Increase in buying volume, decrease in selling volume, increase in buying volume, decrease in selling volume. This is a pretty classic depiction of a bull trend because of these higher highs and higher lows. And this is also being confirmed by volume signature here too. Things are looking pretty decent for Mara. Some of the other indicators to look at is the Ishimoku cloud on the weekly. On the weekly, it clearly broke uh, about the Ishimoku cloud here, and basically it's just been consolidating over here as a little bit of a bull flag that's been lasting for quite some time. It's still above the Ishimoku cloud. The Tenkan is still above the Kijin. So this is still a, a you know a weekly bull trend um, based on the way that it's looking and based on the position that it is at is because it's above the Ishimoku cloud after a recent breakout. Now, instead of looking at the Ichimoku cloud, you can also look at the moving averages. I'm pulling up the 20 weekly moving average, 50 moving, uh, week moving average, and the 100 week moving average. These are simple moving averages, not exponential. And right now you can see a very clear trend. 20 is over 50, is over 100. This is a weekly bull trend, and this weekly bull trend just fully developed not long ago, just a few months ago, back here. And what you're seeing here is that there's still a nice separation between 20 and 50 and 100. And even 100 is really possibly sloping. All of these are possibly sloping right here. It's been a little bit curling down a little bit because of the consolidation, but it's still possibly sloping. The bull trend is still intact. So far, all the indicators that I'm showing you are really pointing to a bull trend from the monthly and from the weekly. To me, as far as I'm concerned, the daily doesn't matter because that's not the time frame. Like, I'm not a day trader. I don't really care that much about it. But so far, this really does look a little bit like a bull trend here on different time frames that I'm looking at from the monthly and on the weekly. We never know when this downtrend is going to happen to be finished. But the, the thing is, it's been happening on low volume, decreasing volume. So at some point, it's going to end. And it's going to end sooner rather than later. And when it ends, all it takes is just a little bit of bullish volume to kind of pick up for price to really break above the zone right here because it's been consolidating over here for so long. And honestly, the way it looks right now is still just a back test of this very important horizontal level over here. That's what it still looks like. Now, if you're asking me what are some of the important levels to pay attention to, I'll tell you this. Instead of looking at 20, because it's already kind of broke down um, under 20 already, right? So there's no point to look at 20 anymore. One very interesting thing is if you look at 30, and I'm going to pull up some of the values over here for you to look at. If you look at the moving averages, you can see that it's actually bouncing off the 30 week moving average over here at 16.94. If it ends up going down further before going up, and I think it's completely fine if it ends up doing that, even if there's a zone right here is very important, it can end up breaking down the zone a little bit and still find support that doesn't bother me as much. If it breaks down a little bit further, you're going to find support down here at 15.09, which is the 50 moving average, uh, 50 week moving average. I doubt it's going to drop all the way down to you know the 100, but the 100 is around 12 right now. So again, you know, you're talking about 17, 15, I'm just going to round to a whole number, 17, 15, and 12. These are some of the important numbers here to pay attention to. And uh, those are some of the risk levels that you're, you know, pay attention to as well. Now, if you look at Ichimoku cloud, um, you know, around 12, that's also going to be where the top of the cloud is going to be. So if it ends up dropping that down, there's still a lot of support down here. If you are looking at the volume shelf analysis, you can see some of the very important levels down here. It's been basically bouncing between these two volume shelves here and there. So you're really talking about some of the other volume shelf levels over here. 17 is a big level, right? Again, 15 is a pretty decent level over here. And then finally around like, you know, 12.5 or 12, somewhere around here is also a pretty important level. But most likely price just kind of bouncing between these levels over here. And I expected to find some support over here at this big volume shelf over here whichever area that is fine support to bounce up, I don't really care. 
and because the bearish energy is really be diminishing, I think it's just, just going to find support somewhere over here before bouncing up. When exactly that is, I don't think anybody can really tell you. But so far, these are some important levels over here that you can look at. To me, there's also a risk of if you're selling out and you're looking to buy back down to lower levels, what if it doesn't go down that far? What if it finds support at one of these levels and bounce? You can bounce anytime. Volume is decreasing. A lot of bullish energy is being building up because it's been consolidating over here. And the primary trend is a bull trend. Right. So what happens if there's some big volume just comes in and next thing you know, it just pushes price way above this um, volume shelf over here? You could end up buying higher if you don't execute well down here. So those are some of the thoughts. Now, when I'm going to pull up some of the monthly chart over here, I'm going to pull up the Ishimoku cloud here as well. Again, the price has kind of already broken down the tank and the Kishin down here. The tank is around 20.6. The Kishin is around 18.6. So there are not really a whole lot of cloud support levels here to, to pay attention to. But as I was showing you some of the moving average um, levels that I was kind of talking about, you know, with the 100 uh, week moving average, which is basically pretty much very similar to the 20 month moving average to be coming on with you you know this right here is around 13 but the other support i was showing you with the 30 week was around 17 and then the um the 50 week is around 15 so those are some of the more important you know risk level to kind of pay attention to and finally i want to go through one thing that's um get asked a lot in terms of what the price target is there are going to be some um, pretty crazy targets that i could that can potentially envision happening if you end up having such a significant amount of accumulation if we're still at the early to mid innings of the bitcoin cycle then you're really talking about price got rejected here at 0 0.382 but once price breaks above this level the other volume shelves over here is not going to be as strong so you could potentially have something that is pretty impulsive that goes over the next 12 to 18 months going up to the higher level maybe even potentially surpass the all-time high to the 1.618 or 2.618 levels up here. I think it's entirely possible that that happens. Now, there are a lot of people that are arguing that, you know, we're not gonna have the same support of Fed, we're not gonna have the same, have the same kind of liquidity level to, to be swashing around to support that kind of move. All I gotta say is that, you know, Bitcoin has been making crazy moves for years and years, for about a decade and a half now, and, and it's not, you know, anything that is inconceivable you're also going to have a lot of liquidity that's coming in from the government um, you know for example all these stimulus bills that they're doing for example internationally they're also printing money like crazy and you can see that you know bitcoin is very 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 much of a bull trend and all of this really reflects the amount of global liquidity that's been going in so i don't want to rule out some of the bullish mark down uh, the bullish um levels up here it could be lower, it could be higher. I just want you to keep an open mind. All I'm saying is that the trend right now is bullish. And there's a lot of consolidation over here, building a lot of bullish energy. So who knows what's going to happen over the next 12 to 18 months. I am positioned in Mara, and I will be patient. We'll see what happens. Getting close to 20 minutes. Have a good one. Bye.